Toute l'actualité en ligne avec francenetinfo.com Votre journal en ligne gratuit. L'info autrement. I undertakes me to read and to answer all the written questions on these cardboards. Raise the right hand and say, I swear. I swear. <laughs> I swear. Okay. Can you tell us whom you are? Okay. My name is Lorenzo Ciaccotti. I'm the author of Golem, my first book in France. The book is here. <laughs> Just a second. Okay. It's uh, my first book in France and is uh, published by Glena Comics. Uh, it's a translation of an original Italian uh, book by Bao Publishing, which is an Italian publishing company. And I'm here for my first Angoulême Festival, so I'm pretty excited to be here. Uh, here it is. Um, could you resume us? Golem. So, Golem is a um, dystopian tale about a young boy called Steno who is frightened by his dreams, so he doesn't want to sleep anymore, so he has like weird eyes and uh, is kind of suffering for that and we follow uh, uh, his story uh, uh, through a process that will bring him to grow up to become a man finally and to be able to uh, face his dreams his nightmares and be able to daydream okay uh, finally taking control over his dreams and so finally taking control over life okay because we all know that dreams are what make things possible okay so it's all about uh, a boy's dreams okay in a world that is pretty in the need of dreamers because it's a dystopian tale and like all the uh, dystopian tales in their genre uh, 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 the world that is going around Steno which is the name of the, this boy is kind of uh, very mean okay uh, it's a dark future okay somehow it's a dark future made of every every good boss uh, every uh, how do you say that in English Just a, no uh, you know uh, like industry okay and economics go very well okay so everybody has uh, everything you could even dream of okay but it's uh, it's it's clearly an unhappy uh, situation okay so Steno is growing in this world okay where everybody has everything they need but nobody dreams anymore okay mm, it's your first festival of Angoulême what do you think of the welcome of your comic and friends because this time the balloon is the other side um, I guess when I first brought my comic to my Italian editor back in Italy I wasn't expecting them to accept it like I was sure they would refuse it and so starting from them uh, every news about Golem it's only a very good news for me because I was never thinking about it okay. uh, a possible success in Italy has, uh, in, in Italy has been uh, a huge success and uh, way more okay than one, uh, what I was expecting and uh, in France uh, I, I read all the reviews that are starting to pop out over the internet they are all good uh, right now I have uh, an issue of Le Monde that is that is speaking very well about my comic and Angoulême went very well today I made my first dedicast and was very 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 exciting yesterday I even met uh, Otomo Sensei uh, at dinner, so it was well worth making a book. So, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, how is the comic strip world perceived in Italy? Um, actually, Italy 
had a very huge tradition between the 60s, 70s and 80s and then somehow uh, went uh, toward a crisis, big one, okay, that I guess has something to do with the change of a market, okay, because the Italian market was all around the newsstands. Well, right now it's totally changed. It's not totally changed, but libraries took over, okay? And they are now, right now, they, every library has very important space for comics. So I guess we are going through a very important renaissance, okay, of comic book, of the book, okay, with comic strips. So, like graphic novels or roman graphic, okay, like one shot, okay? And uh, so my opinion is that in this specific moment, uh, comics are the are like are very cool in Italy right now. Okay, making comics is something that is very sought after. So I guess it's a right moment to publish a book in Italy. I was very lucky. Okay, if it was like six years ago, I don't know, maybe. And actually, I made comics for 10 years, maybe more, okay, it's 1998, my first comic book published, but it was all independent stuff, and actually I didn't make it, never, okay, to, to publish a book as an author, even because I wasn't ready as an author, but still, it was much more difficult. Right now, uh, I, I feel like it was a... Um, coincidence like of factors like good factors that was me getting probably better and the market being very open to new ideas okay because there is this new market growing right now okay so where the mixture of different styles in your comic come from sometimes comic look like a little bit poetic and humanist like Miyazaki and quiet and very colored it's uh, ta -da. so um, it's a complex question and I will try to answer in the simple way possible. Uh, let's start with a very uh, wide shot okay, of the history of drawing okay, in the last century. Okay? And you can say that like, people like Mobius are the uh, end of a process that starts with Japanese, with uh, Lynn Claire in uh, Belgium and in France, uh, starting from the Art Nouveau. And uh, Japanese, as the name says, comes from Japan, okay, like Utamaro, uh, Hokusai. So it's weird because our, in, in, even in our most traditional, like iconic European style of drawing, okay, there is a strong influence of Japan and in Japan people like Otomo Sensei which is right now the director like the president of the Angular festival is uh, is very influenced by Mobius okay so you know influences are very important in art in general and they take place back and forth continuously like Tetsuka which is the Osamu Tetsuka which is the it's called the manga god, the inventor of manga, was very influenced by Disney or by Fleischer or Seger. So you just can, but nobody says that anymore because it's totally normal. Okay. So st starting from that, I, I I grown up, I grew up in a moment in Italy where I could access any kind of comic book ever conceived, like from Humanoid Associate. Um, American comics, Argentinian comics, Japanese comics, Italian comics, underground comics like uh, Andrea Pazienza, Tanino Liberatore, uh, Rank Xerox. So I, I was overwhelmed with all this way of drawing. So basically when I started drawing, my first question was what I, why I did actually like each style of drawing, okay? And what I could need of those styles in my works. Okay, so the, in in Golem there are many styles that that overlap and 
and then that alternate during the narration and each style for me is a matter of choice it's like choosing the right way to say something okay and then if you need to say something else you just shift to another language visual language because I wanted to make a comic that was as less as verbal as possible less text I could uh, with no captions no explanation no nothing and uh, I tried to re um, to relay only on the, the the visual aspect of the comic so when the style changes you know now it's a flashback or now it's a dream or now it's a, a virtual VR vision okay or now it's daydreaming okay so this kind of changes in style are not a matter of heart but uh, are uh, a matter of passionate uh, attention okay to delivering the content the best way possible okay I don't know if this had a nice uh, 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 let's say a good result okay but my intention was there okay so I'm I'm much happy to be able to answer why this is something that you drew this uh, why this this part of this comic is drawn this way and not and being able not to answer oh because I just liked it for me it's kind of a goal okay I can tell you why okay actually so because for me you know poetics just to get to that poetry okay note in the question for me poetics is more I, I made classic studies not artistic studies like literature humanism and I was strike when I was young that the technique word the poetics sorry the poetic word as uh, is Greek its Greek roots is uh, in a verb which is poieo which means making okay and po poetic is poetike techne which is the ability and uh, uh, consciousness in doing things the choices okay in the way to do things okay okay so poetics for me are a set of choices um, because art gives you an infinite and endless possibilities okay of choices so being able to choose exactly what you need okay it's the stronger strongest artistic act that you can do of course you can go wrong okay I'm not saying that I'm right okay but my idea behind style in behind poetics is about choice it's about being conscious of what you're doing okay so why have you taken so long time to invent illustrate and color such artwork such a work so um, actually it took a lot a lot of time because I wasn't able to deliver it right before all this time like everybody says oh it took so long that's cool because uh, uh, you put a lot of effort and it's not so good because it's it's because I wasn't I wasn't able to do that before okay so it's only a matter of being not good at what I do to take 20 years to make a book but actually to be very clear and precise Golem uh, uh, so like uh, very different stages of evolution and uh, like in the middle ones I got even a lot of collaborators coming in there is Emanuele Sabetta which is uh, the man who is this book is dedicated to there is two Emanuele in the second page uh, it's him uh, that did an insane amount of work uh, helping me with symbols and namings and all the setup that actually changed in the end but deeply is rooted in his work okay so I consider him like a sort of ghost order okay uh, he doesn't want to me to say that but <laughs> I always I, but he deserves that so I always say this uh, and then he, he fights with me because oh, you don't have to say that you're too humble so <laughs> but in the end uh, those stages so very different changes in shape and form of the book before it was a series then get back to a book then a series again then a book okay so it was a struggle okay to find the right way the right market and
and in the end, when I found the right editor, the right publisher, sorry, and uh, the right uh, form for the book, it took very few time because I went like four pages per day, very fast, uh, from uh, storyboard to color to lettering, and it took like five, six months to deliver the full book. So it was like when you have to jump from a very high cliff and you take a lot before jumping <laughs> but the jump takes like a second okay <laughs> so it was like that your fiction being very close to reality which have you wanted to make pass as a particular message in Gollum of course yes and uh, the you know when you make there are two big truths behind this question first of all when you make science fiction Science fiction have to be very realistic. Other than that, you just don't you just don't uh, take it like it's you, it's you don't believe it. Okay, so it's very important to when you do world building to make it very uh, believable. Okay, like everything is consistent. Okay. It, it's not important to be realistic, but consistent is very important, okay? What I'm saying is that, uh, so all the work in graphic design, in uh, mm, designing all the products, and stuff that you see, and the technology that you see in Golem, even if it's, of course, uh, blending with a tail, okay, like a mythological tail approach, uh, must uh, I, I had to do it very I must I, I, I had to be very picky and my background as an industrial designer for uh, communication and uh, interface design helped a lot in those terms moreover I, I think that the future in, in Gollum is not a real future because everybody says oh do you think we are going we are really going that direction okay well my answer is that the future that I depicted in Gollum is a caricature like an allegory of the present okay so what I'm saying is that is not that strong like it is because of course I, I, I blew up all the things that I wanted to pop out strong okay into the setup but of course it's a matter of being uh, able to deliver a very strong message about the present okay did your associate certain ah, did your associate certain passages of the comic strip with your personal experience ah okay yes um, Of the father and like yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I'm just thinking about it. But, well, of course, uh, somehow, yes, because it's it's all about what I believe. Okay, and your beliefs, they 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 just grow one on each other while you are living your life. So, of course, uh, a book has to do with with another's life for sure. Okay. And this book it's about family, okay, and uh, which is a major thread in in Gollum. So yes, everybody has a family. So <laughs> I guess it. it's important to me for sure. What are your future projects? Um, future projects are um, many and involve uh, comics in Italy and. Uh, uh, in other countries, uh, I'm th last year. I um, there is a new book called Astro Gamma, we, which is uh, a collection of epi uh, an episodic story that I built uh, on an um, independent comic book magazine back in 2006 till 2010. Right now, it's being compiled as a full story, full book by Bao Publishing. I think it probably will come out in France soon. Um, yeah, yes, thank you so much. And um, then there is uh, 
I illustrated a Haruki Murakami book called The Strange Library. It's a short novel with a lot of illustrations. Then I'm making a comic book for Bonelli Editore, which is a huge company, comic book company in Italy. It's the comic book company that publishes uh, Tex and uh, Dylan Dog and or Orflan, in which is now out for uh, Glenar Comics also. Uh, which is called this comic is called Manolith. It's a one-shot, fully painted uh, comic book, which is going to become also a movie that I went to shoot last year in the U.S. for six months uh, as a visual uh, supervisor of the movie. Uh, the movie is written by, uh, sorry, it's directed by uh, Roberto Ricchioni, which is. Right now, is the responsible for Dylan Dog in Italy, and uh, is uh, also the author, uh, along with Mauro Zeo, of the comic book, uh, and will be out soon in 2016. Anytime soon, uh, and uh, end of the year. By the end of the year, I'll probably be releasing the first book of a three book series called Geist Machine, which is my next uh, uh, book as a an author as a standalone author okay uh, will be full color like Gollum kind of a type type of books science fiction like post humanity science fiction something like that oh wow tell us something in French uh, <laughs> uh, so I don't know uh, ah uh, chacun se porte sa croix, moi je porte un plume. Oh, <laughs> okay, because I'm making comics, I'm 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 very happy for what I do. So no cross for me. Okay. Uh, just say why Frenchies should buy Golem. Okay. Well, I don't know because uh, probably because it's. Uh, I always loved the open-minded take of French uh, people on comics, so they accept very much more, uh, like comics in France are a melting pot, like there's a lot of styles going on, and Golem, it's kind of right up this alley, okay, so it takes very uh, strong okay influences by Japanese American French Italian culture and so I guess it's a nice story that delivers everything in a convenient fast reading experience so it's pretty intense and it's uh, speaking about now so I guess it's it's kind of rare to find a comic book that is so into uh, our uh, contemporary culture and being science fiction so I don't know it's I hope that everybody will like it okay of course let's now have a drink at the bar the Luro perfect thank you so much thank you. Okay. Thank you. ciao Bye -bye. ciao